I had no purpose and I had no goal and uh, it drove me into a big drug addiction. Seeing my mom cry like that changed everything for me. We went from 1 million to 3.3, two months. Really fast your story, how you got started with the online business. I know you know you started with like $20,000 in debt and then like now two and a half years later you had like 3.3 .3 million a month. Yeah, so it, it pretty much started like two and a half years ago, right? And uh, I used it to be a plumber. And I remember I was just uh, sitting in traffic jams every goddamn single day, right? And just staring out of the window. And uh, and I just thought to myself that th this, is, this is my life now. I have to do this for the rest of my life. And I gotta be more to life than just this shit here, right? So I didn't know what it was. And I didn't know anything else I could do. So I actually got uh, super frustrated and uh, depressed. And um, I had no purpose and I had no goal. And uh, it drove me into a big drug addiction. A lot of, uh, a lot of drugs, uh, a lot of steroids, a, a lot of parties. And at uh, and, uh, 27 years old, I'm 31 now, my, my body was uh, simply shutting down. So it got so bad, so I couldn't even uh, walk up the stairs because I got so big and, uh, and because of all of the drugs in the system, my, my body couldn't breathe anymore. So yeah, it actually got so bad, so I had to go to the hospital. And uh, then, my, then the doctor told me that, Philip, uh, your kidney number is higher than a cancer patient and, uh, at 27, and I didn't care. Just right after the hospital, I took out more drugs, more steroids, more party. And uh, then my mom was a, a nurse, she is a nurse. Then uh, she saw my name in the system. That's illegal, but she saw it, right? But uh, then the, she got the family together and they literally slapped me in the face and said, uh, Philip, what the fuck are you doing? Can you see all of these people are getting sad if you, if you die from an early age? And, uh, and seeing my mom cry like that changes everything for me, like everything. So, uh, for that moment right there, it probably saved me from dying at a pretty early age. So, uh, I wanted to give them everything. So, I searched, like many of you guys, how to make money online, right? <laughs> how to make money online. And uh, I, I bought it all. I bought it all. I bought everything. I bought a YouTube automation. I tried dropshipping. I tried flipping sneakers on eBay. I tried everything, right? Everything. And uh, I lost everything. <laughs> I went into $20,000 in debt, I had to sell my house, I had to sell my car and uh, I had to move into a basement apartment that was no higher than this to the ceiling and uh, the only thing I had was, at that time was a bed, a computer and an internet connection, that's it. Girlfriend left me everything, like I literally hit a rock bottom like that and then I remember I was sitting there on the, on the bed and I looked around, and that was like uh, nothing, nothing. I literally only had that bed there and the computer. And, uh, and I said to myself that, okay, my, my mom and dad can't see me like this. This is, this, I'm, I feel ashamed of what I've done with my life. So instead of just you kind of want it, right, like everybody else, they all, everybody wants to drive a nice car, everybody wants to have a nice villa, right, they, but they just kind of want it. And then I said to myself, okay, stop the Netflix, stop uh, answering people that don't do anything for you, friends, uh, family members, and so on. And, and uh, I remember I, I lent the money from my mom, $1,500 to buy mentorship, and I had $30 left, right? And I bought two books at that time. It was Expert Secrets and the 10X Rule from, from Grant Cadone. And uh, then I invested in, in the mentor that taught me how to sell other people's programs. And from that basement apartment, I went on and made $9,300 30 days later after deciding to do whatever it takes to, to reach your goals, right? And uh, six months later, $233,000. Within two years, I made my first million dollars online, uh, moved to Dubai, uh, retired my mom, helping my dad. He's, my dad's house burned down and because of the money I make, I could uh, get him a, an apartment uh, because the insurance company didn't want to pay him uh, because they thought he set the fire. 
right? So he had nothing, he lost everything, right? And because of the business I've been able to build, I could get him an apartment and, and things like that, right? That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. I don't know what about you guys, but that's my goal. That's my dream and has been since the beginning. And uh, two and a half years later, I made $15 million online. And yeah, pretty much it. Nice, awesome, thank you. I think like the thing that you said was like the all-in mentality, like, you know, we've been working together for, what is it, like one and a half years now, kind of like more closely, like recently, like for Phil, like you're always like all in, right? Like whatever it is, when we want to try something new, like outbound sales team, building the backend systems and processes, influencer marketing, like you're ready to technically spend a million dollars this month on influencer marketing, right? Um, you want to talk more about the all in mentality? Because you mentioned it also earlier, like that's how you got started, right? Going all in was the, the big game changer for you. Yeah, and uh, the, the last thing you want to add to anything is time, right? Uh, you probably have something you need, you know, to do in your business right now, but you haven't done it yet, right? I'm gonna do it tomorrow. Yeah, then it becomes tomorrow. Then it becomes the next day, and the next day, and the next day. And before you know it, that that little problem has turned into a big problem, right? But you just keep pushing it, right? So if you think about doing something, the last thing you want to add to it is time. You just do it now. Yeah, but Philip, it's it's ten. I need my eight hours of sleep. Fuck that shit. Right? You don't need eight hours. Right? You need to do it now. So that's pretty much what I've done up until now. I don't know everything. Right? That's why I'm here because I want to learn from you guys. And uh, and you just do it. And you just go with the flow. Yeah. Right? Uh, you don't need to know everything about the perfect VSL or the perfect form for influencer marketing. You just need to do something. You need to spend some money on influencer marketing. Then you yeah. figure it out after, right? Time, because you, you can always make more money, right? Always. You can always get more cars. You can get more girlfriends, more wife if you want to. But the last thing you can't get more of is time. Ah. Yeah, working with you, like it, like it was so noticeable for me also. <clears throat> Like whenever we, you know, we do like weekly meetings and stuff where we talk about your business and everything, right? And whenever we come up with new ideas, whether it's for example the outbound sales team or trying something new here or there or whatever, like, you know, you're just ready and get everything done like immediately. And I think like also for me, like working with Phil, it's like one of the biggest learnings. Like if you have something to do, if you want to test something, whether it's like, I don't know, for example, we, we, we now want to you know, improve the direct messages because Andy, for example, he's crushing it with direct messages, right? You're doing like a million a month closely, collected only through direct messages, right? And we want to improve on that too. So we did it immediately, immediately booked a call with like a coach and everything. And um, yeah, just, just, just speed, right? Speed. Yeah. And the nice thing about speed is like, if you are doing it more often and often, over and over again, like it becomes a habit. Like doing it now becomes the habit because for most people, the habit is, and do it tomorrow, and it's going to be pushed back again, pushed back again. It's beginning very hard to do it. But as soon as you're getting into this, like you just like if you're taking action immediately for like a week, a month, like, you're just getting used to it. Right? You become a machine. Yeah. And you become you an execution machine, right? Exactly. You just do it. You just do like boom, boom, boom. Yeah. When do we do it? Now. No. Yeah. It's, it's weird to wait. You know? You feel like. It. And you set a great example for for everybody who works with you, including like, your own team, which is key. Just multiplies. Ah. Yeah. So I have a question. How did you manage for you also Phil, but also for you with Bashar? So the do it now mentality, I understand in the small kit, right? But how do you go about it on a bigger project, right? Shiny object versus do it now. Meaning that, for example, let's say you mentioned to me that um, like that it was kind of boring sometimes scaling Bashar, we just repeat doing stuff, right? And we are so many times, specifically like the A type entrepreneur, you always get these new ideas, right? Or for you also, um, Phil. And you mentioned, oh, you implemented this DSL directly, for example, or you changed the pricing. But how do you make sure that you don't fuck up your business by implementing right now without thinking much about it? Like, where do you draw the line? Or do you even, like, where do you decide to just keep doing what you're doing, keep boring, and give systems for that? Versus you just try it, it doesn't work for back, or like, yeah. Sure. You want to start, Phil? 
Yeah, it's a show you are an entrepreneur, aren't you? You fix problems. That's what you do. That's what you get paid for. So you just you just try and then uh, figure it out after. Right? I didn't know if I could sell a two thousand five hundred dollar program in in fourteen minutes direct on a buy button. But I said, okay, let's do it. Let's try it. Right? And we went from I don't know one million to three point three in in two months something like that, uh -huh. because it just did it, right? And if it didn't work, then we just go back, no harm done. Okay, so if I understand correctly, it's like you just do it so fast that instead of you change it and go back to something else, it doesn't work within two days versus two months, and that's how it doesn't break the whole business. I, 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 t I test off for like three or four days, that's it. And then, and then I got plenty of numbers to look at, right? And I'm not, I'm not a numbers guy. Like the, the only thing I want to look at is the bottom line. How much money did I make? Perfect. Did I make more than last month? Perfect. Let's do more of that. Nah. I would prioritize though. Okay. I would prioritize though. So we like we're very big on prioritizing and looking what brings the company most cash flow. And then really focusing on the one or two things or just the one thing that brings the cash flow and just like a horse with horse blinders. You know, pure focus on cash flow and just doing that. As long as it works and, and not even going on the next thing. Because if you go on the next thing, you just risk, well, you know, there's no need for you to, to do two things. If it's one thing, you could just take it further. Um, yeah, maybe. It keeps bringing money. But then again, at some point, you start testing other things. And like, just like film, you, you execute and you test this, you test that. You, you do a lot of mistakes, right? Every month, we would be like, okay, how can we double the charge numbers? And we'll write down a list like 10 things. And some plans didn't work. Some months we doubled the numbers, some months we didn't. But then after a year, we knew, okay, those things continually put more cash flow into the company if we do them. And we learned, okay, those are the two things. And if we just focus on those two things, we can take them very far. And we've seen other companies in different niches, like Fashion Nova with Fast Fashion, doing influencer marketing. And if they can spend, uh, I don't know how many hundreds of millions of dollars a year, then, then we for sure can in, in, the, in the business niche. Yeah. I just want to add like two things are very important like for implementing new things. One very important thing is how reversible is something. Because oh. how reversible, like how can you make it reverse? Because for example, if you have a sales team now, right? And you decide I want to make everything automated. And you say like I'm I have to like fire my entire sales team. Like it's very hard to go back if you do that. If you have ten sales reps, it doesn't work. But if you want to make a tweak in the funnel, you do it, you see it doesn't work, after one day you can go back. But that's like one very important uh, factor. And then another factor is like, does it impact the current state of your business? For example, if someone comes to you and says, hey, I can do your Twitter, done for you, do nothing. Give me, give me three months, I'm gonna show you what, what it can do. And if, if it works like, for like you're paying like 2K per month, you can just do it, right? Like, you know, just experiment, do it, do it fine. It will not impact the current state of business. So that's like also like one big thing um, because if it does impact your business, you of course have to take a look at it. But if not, you can just like run some experiments. And, and yeah, when it comes to scaling in general, I think it's also relevant to Andy. I think the biggest asset you can have is great people, like great people in the team, because you have to like kind of like replicate yourself. Of course, like you, you might not get someone who's like 100% caring as much about the business as you do, but even if just 80% of that, and you have more people of that. You need that to scale, because if you're like the, the, the genius behind the business, you can scale to a certain point, but after one point you will burn out, because you're the brain. If something's broken, your team will not fix it. You have to tell them how to fix it. And that works, but if you have, like, I don't know, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 people that are working with you, it's gonna be a shit show, you know? So I, I think the single most important thing, unless you have read the good book, uh, Good to Great, Everybody should read this. Yeah. What is what? It's good to great. It's a really, really amazing book from Phil Collins. Yeah. And uh, and basically, they always say like the ability to scale depends on how how many great people you have. Not not people, but how many amazing great people you have in the team. And that's literally like the, the, the biggest restriction you have when, when it comes to scaling. Yes, you need systems, but if you have someone really great who's passionate who's into the business. They will start building systems and they will come to you and hey, just build this thing out and now it's working better. And like, awesome. And you just give them some guidance and feedback. And that's how you scale. And they will report to you and do this stuff for you. 
And that's probably the single most important thing when it comes to scaling, really. I just want to add to Max, and it's like your job as a leader to paint the exciting future for your team. Because you're excited, you know where you want to go and it excites you. But your team doesn't know why you're excited. And, and I, like, I realize so many people forget to communicate their exciting vision to their team. And they're like, why aren't these guys motivated and fired up in the meeting society, right? Well, you just didn't tell them why you're fired up and motivated. Ah. And then also, when you do experiments, make sure you measure the impact of those experiments based on cash flow. And how does it impact cash flow? And you can actually measure it somehow. And you can't measure it, for example, if you run two experiments at once, because you're not going to know, okay, did both go bad? Or did one go good and the other go bad and then just balance it out or out so it's not neutral, right? Or did both go good and then you don't even know which one went better, which one went worse? So just do one thing at a time and then make sure you set like a time, okay, we're going to test it this much. That's the impact of this experiment on cash flow. And then, depending on that, you, you see, you're like, okay, we're going to uh, kill this experiment or we're going to put more money. Maybe one thing, because Danny, you said earlier, like, hey, you can make a list of like 10, like you have to prioritize, right? And um, I, I also think like, you know, working with you guys and hanging out and everything and also like from own business experience, like there's always so, 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 so many things that you can do to theoretically scale the business. Like you could build this new funnel or do this new order bump or do YouTube and Twitter and this and that. But like one of the key things that you guys did to, to scale Bashar and that I learned from you guys also is, um, like always ask yourself like, hey, what's the biggest lever that we can pull right now? Because there's technically like 30 or 100 things you can do to get the business to the next level, but like what's going to have the most impact? And for us, for example, it was like the last couple of months, just like doubling down on influencer marketing, spending more, improving the content quality. And if we just focus on that, the business scales. But whenever we, I don't know, got distracted and focused on other stuff, like building out a new funnel or an order bump or whatever, or trying to focus on the email marketing, like the focus just went away and uh, numbers dropped, right? And it comes down to just being disciplined and just honest with yourself and very logical, like just brutally disciplined, right? Like not looking for too many shiny objects and if this one thing is bringing in the, ca like the cash every single month, then keep doing it and do it at a bigger scale. Yeah. And it's some, like at some point, it might even get boring. It's like, how do we scale? You add 100 influencers the next month. Okay, how do we scale the next month? You add 200. How do we scale the next month? We had 400. Then how do you scale the next month? Yeah, 800. It kind of gets boring because everybody around you is like, ah, you have to have the outbound seller team. You have to do this with your VSL. You have to do this. You have to implement this. Then you hear this at a mastermind. You hear this at a mastermind. But, and then people kind of like jump and they do thousands of things and they just create a whole mess and they, they get distracted and they spread themselves thin. As long as like, and for, for Instagram businesses, what we realized the two things that make you more money is posting more of better quality content is one, and two is spending more on great quality influencers. And if you do those things, you can grow to a couple million dollars a month. Very easy. It is very boring, but it is very fun what you can do with the money, right? So that's where the fun is. But if you do the boring stuff, then you actually have the opportunity to do more of the exciting stuff. Because if your business is, I don't know, making like a million dollars profit per month, right? You can afford to do some crazy experiments. Like you can like, I don't know, like give away a Lamborghini or something like that and just see what the impact is. And yes, you might lose a like quarter million dollars, but it, it, you, you can afford it, you know? And, and it's very nice to have some room um, for, for improvement. And to also like ask, answer your question, Lenny, like, being distracted versus like, uh, like staying focused versus trying new things. If you have a clear path to scale and if you just know if you add like 100, 200, 400 more influencers, if you know that works and it's working, then just do it. If not, it's not working, try doing it differently. And if that's still not working, then you maybe have to do something else. And, and yeah, just like a general note and maybe for everyone to note down for this mastermind, because you're probably gonna, a lot of the, uh, you're gonna hear a lot of things that you can improve or implement and do. After this event, like really take like maybe what, one, two, even three hours, write like what you wanna do and like the biggest learnings on paper and really think about some time. What should you really implement right now? And then do the things that are most important first and take action on them immediately. Because then like you're gonna have like a few key things or maybe just one thing that you're gonna implement and that's gonna be the needle mover because if you try to do everything, you're doing nothing. That's can you not shy away? Can, can, can I add something to that? 
Yeah. Uh, so what I when I when I teach people affiliate marketing and uh, they invest a lot of money to get my one-on-one -on -one help, I see the same mistake everybody is doing. Business owners, they are so goddamn cheap. Like they don't want to spend any money on anything. Like it, it amazes me. Like what it, what are you doing? So you only have 24 hours in a day, like everybody else. The only way to add more hours is to get more people, right? You spend two hours to every day come up with some two emails, and then you need to put it into the AWeb or Active Campaign system, and you need to schedule it or calculate the time zones, and the fuck off, right? It's like <laughs> it, it, it takes time. Everything takes time, right? And it comes down to, again, the, you don't have much more time. So what I what I did to scale extremely fast, I just add more people to it, right? Just add more people. I don't I don't want to write an email. Find somebody that can do it. I don't want to post my content. Find somebody. Where do you find them? Social media. Social media. You can literally take your phone and say, Hey guys, we uh, I'm looking for a VA that can uh, handle my email support. Uh, tickets, whatever, right? Uh, DM me uh, support. And you, there we go, you have 10 people already, like in two seconds. But that's again a mistake a lot of people are doing. You're adding time to everything. I need to have the perfect CV and shit like that. No, we just need to put shit out there, right? The faster you have an idea and you can get it out, the faster you make money. Yeah. Yeah, I think also, like, one thing to add to that, like, you know, like, biggest level to pull, uh, what we talked earlier about, like, focusing on one thing. Like you can move with the speed and test so many different things and like test different levels like outbound sales team and back and team over here and this and that because you have so many great people on your team, right? Exactly. And you just tell them, hey, test this, do this, do this, do this, and then you test like I don't know, ten things at the same time. So exactly, uh, we we currently have fifty four people in the business now, and and I started with one support. Like that was the first thing I outsourced. I don't want to fucking reply to the emails anymore. <laughs> like come on. Right? And, and then it just started, I found one good person right? with the mind in the right place and then like everybody else in this room here, you are motivated with money, right? So I pay my team the most money. They cannot get a better job than working at me, right? And, and they know that. They know it. Okay, we work for Philip, we make the most money here and if we do a good job, he even pays us bonuses. So you see? I'm not scared to spend my money because if they if if I put a carrot in front of them, dingling five hundred dollar bonus or two thousand dollar bonus for the closers or anything, right? They are motivated to do more, right? If they do a good job, I make more money, right? I want to add to that. Bashar was really good at this, and he kept saying one thing to me whenever we were talking. Is he was like, Danny, people are opportunists. They go to where opportunity is, and he was able to give people this vision, and he was able to excite them. He was able to paint this exciting future, and then he was able to create this opportunity for people and give them the opportunity to grow if they, of course, deliver. And then just to add to what, what, uh, what Phil was saying, do not shy away from experiments, right? Like, I think we tested like we ran more, I'm 100% sure we ran more experiments than any person in influencer marketing, like thousands. And most of them were like stupid and we felt stupid after doing them, but it's true. And every single thing that we know today that brings in the money into the company at some point was an experiment, right? That's a great way to think about it, right? So if you don't continue experimenting, at some point you're gonna run out of those money-making things because everybody else is gonna start doing them and when everybody's doing them, it's, it's very logical when it happens. I want to say something about hiring um, because feel that like with great people, the, the thing is, you can all agree like a really great person, like they can sometimes be hard to find. But the thing is, if you want a great person on the team and you motivate them, right, you inspire them, like the thing is great people know other great people. Like if you have someone who's like a low performer, like if you, if you hire someone of their, their contacts, like chances are they're gonna be a low performer too. But really what we've seen is that like high performers and A players in the team, they know more people. They have a network of people. So if you have one person in the team that's really, really good, chances are very high that they have more great people. And if you inspire them and they are like motivated, they will like 
like connect you with people and you can ask them to connect you and then you have more people in the team and they know more people. So like you, like literally like if you have just one great person, like one true fit, like chances are very high that you can like, you know, hire, 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 hire just out of their contact list. And, just, uh, and Keith's really asking your team. Like most people, like they just have their ideas and they run them through their team. Like we for Bashar, we went into the daily meetings and or weekly meetings and we like sat with our team for two or three hours and we asked them the questions, what can we do to double Bashar's numbers like 50 times? Like they were sick of us at some point. But like we kept asking, we kept asking, we kept asking, we're sitting in a meeting and we're sitting in a meeting and we gave them more time. And then after two hours, they said, ah, we can do this. And then we know it done, right? And we're like, great, great idea, right? And we incentivized them. And then we kept asking, we kept asking. And then after two, two and a half hours, one person's like, ah, I remember, we can also do this. And that's how we came up with our list. It wasn't just our ideas, but we're ask, actually asking our team. That's why they're there, right? And, and then also, if you run their ideas and you realize their ideas and they see they work, then the next time they're gonna be like, oh, I wanna bring more ideas. And now they feel they're a part of the company and it's not just like you running everything through them. It's like, it's a team effort, right? And it's everybody's, this, this is like a team thing. And I think that's really key. Got a question. Question for Phil, yeah. Could you break down your org chart, like what your team looks like, what the structure looks like? Yeah, so um, that is me at the top. Is that what you mean? The structure? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm at the top. And uh, then there is a head of support, head of sales, head of setting, and head of funnels. So we built the funnels for them, right? Uh, and then there is the head of whatever branch you are in, and then they control all of the others under them, right? So there's only those four people that speak to me, right? But in the beginning, you need to speak to everybody. Like, I'm telling you, I a, I'm going to bed and I wake up four times at night and the first thing I do is I respond WhatsApp. And I do that many times during the night, right? I work all the time. And um, you need to do that and you need to push through that point because when you, once you start to have two or three people, you never, you never want to have only one. If you have one sales guy, he knows you only got me. You are done without me, right? They know that. So you always, you always want to have more people, right? And then there is one of these people here and one of the support or the, the guys that handles the Facebook group or whatever you're doing that just stands out and, and really, do, really do a good job. Then you make them, you promote them. And then, then they take over all of the work from that area of the business, right? And uh, as, as Max say, I started with one support then we needed more people in the Facebook group. I, what I did, I asked the support. She knew two friends that wanted to make some more money, right? So we hired them. Then the first closer, right? He knew three people. And then the setter, he knew three people. And then they know people, and they know people, and they know people, right? So it, it's really, it's like the beginning is the hardest, right? Once it's going, it's just, it's going. Right now, I don't hire people anymore. They do it for me. Uh, right. What's, I think what's also interesting for you is like like you're literally like not in contact and don't really kind of like know what's going on. For example, the sales team, like your head of sales, is just taking care of everything. Right? Everything. Yeah. Everything. And if you create this great culture inside of your company and everybody's fired up and excited, then they're going to be way more likely to get their friends who are really good into the company as well, because no one's going to you know refer you someone who who's gonna entrust them to join a company if they're not really, really, really trusting you and excited about it. And for those of you who might think, no, okay, but if I give off like all my control to someone else, like what if they, you know, do a mistake, right? Like how, what, how do I check? And um, what we've learned with that is like keys like variable inspections. So for example, if you hire a new head of sales, yeah, of course, like maybe the first few weeks you're gonna check in maybe every day, like look what's going on. And if you see after that, well, everything's going well, everything's going amazing, maybe you check in once per week with him, you know? And if that's going well, maybe like every two weeks. And, and then you see maybe at some point, oh, a big mistake just happened, right? You're just checking once per month and you like something is going terribly wrong. And then you just start checking in more frequently. 
it's a very like unnatural thing for us, for us humans to do because like we always like to have like something scheduled forever. Like I'm gonna do one check-in every other day for the rest of my life. But then probably you're gonna check in way too often and like it's gonna be taking away too much of your time. But on the other hand, if you're just starting out and make no checks at all, like chances are that something goes really wrong and then you're running because like, again, there's a fire here, there's a fire there and you're freaking out. Um, but if you do like this variable inspections thing, really like adjust the frequency of when you check in, that's really helpful because like it saves more and more of your time and you put your time checking the things that actually need you and not the ones that are already running well. And yeah, one more thing, I know I'm talking a lot, but uh, I think Steve Jobs said this once, like one of the hardest things in business to do is to let other people do their thing. Because in the beginning, it's so much easier if you have done it 10,000 times, just do it yourself. Like someone does it incredibly wrong and just say like, Oh, I'm gonna do it. Like, don't don't do it. Right? I'm just gonna do it because like it will take you 30 seconds and it will take them probably like 35 minutes to figure it out, and you have to explain them, and it feels like wasting your time. But in fact, you're wasting your time in the long run because you are not doing it for five minutes or for 30 seconds, but you're doing it forever, and then more and more things stack up are being added to your plate, and then you're somehow getting to a point where you feel like, oh my God, I can't do that anymore because like you have 10,000 to dos and you start in the morning and you're checking off your maintenance work and it's already like evening, right? So you have to like, you have to learn to let go, let go of the line and uh, trust, trust other people to do the job well. And to add to that, like if you just check on a person every single day and everything they do, the big negative about this is you're taking away responsibility from them, right? And then they, they're like, ah, I know he's gonna check my copy, right? So why should I? put more energy into checking my own copy. And, and it's the whole thing just gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Yeah. And, and an easy way to kind of avoid this, and like even Elon Musk talks about this, like how he runs SpaceX, is they reward innovation and they punish no innovation, right? So like you have to have some consequences. You have to set up something for your team, which is like, okay, if we go towards this goal, okay, we get a reward. And if we do not, then there is a consequence to it. Uh, like, it sounds weird, but it's just Sorry true. about the interruption, but um, recently we had one of the top sales reps from uh, Basha, um, you know, come join the line the consulting club. And, um, you know, we also, he, we asked him some questions and this and that, how to increase, like, close out performance and everything. And one of the things he said is like, hey, go ahead and pay, uh, like, uh, pay in full bonuses to the close us, right? And we started doing it and literally, like, overnight since we implemented the, the pay in full bonuses, like, I don't know, like 70, 75, 80% of the sales, it's just like full cash all the time, right? Do you guys know this now? This is good. Like it's really crazy. Like literally overnight, we went from like collecting 50% to now like 75, 80%, right? So we have from the price points, we have a 3K offer, $5,800 offer, one ten thousand dollar offer, and the bonuses we pay is like $100 for the 3K one, $200 extra for the 5.8 one, and $300 for the 10K one. But also here important, like, one, like at the beginning, we just did it like this. Right, we implemented it, and then the closers, instead of closing, for example, 5.8 and 3K up front, and then like, I don't know, 12 rates, they just close for 3K to get the painful bonus. So what we now do is like, hey, if you collect 3K, you get $100 as a bonus. If you at least collect 5.8, you get $200 as a bonus. If you at least collect 10K, uh, you get $300 as a bonus. And that's, for example, one example um, of like incentivizing people the right way. And I think Andy, you said it this morning, like one of your friends who's, who's, who's also crushing it in the space, like wh what is he doing? He's even punishing people if they don't do painful, right? Yeah, so originally for a long time, like everyone else in the industry, it was like 10% of half collected as a closer you, you take home. Um, and then he does 11.5% cash if it's painful, and he does 8.5% uh, if it's a payment plan, any sort of payment plan. Got it, so if it's payment plan, you know, people earn less money, right? And if it's painful, they have the reward on the other side that they uh, get the bonus. Yeah. 60 million a year? Yeah. Yeah, nice. He's doing it mainly with YouTube ads, right? Yeah, he spends one and a half million a month on YouTube. Nice. That's sick. <laughs> cool.